Okay, so um, hello, I'm Himadri. I'm a final year PhD student in the Whisper Group at INRIA Paris. Um, and my research focuses on extracting and utilizing pair hour scheduling information in order to improve the performance of parallel workloads running inside virtual machines. Uh, my thesis is supervised by uh, Jean-Pierre Lozzi and Julia Lava. Both of them are present in the room. Um, and uh, I'm going to show some graphs, which are generated using the graphing tools that Julia presented at the LPC last year. OK, so um, the context of this work is the dual level of task scheduling that is experienced by parallel applications that run inside virtual machines. Uh, I have a, a minimal example here. Suppose we have a parallel application which is trying to run with two worker threads. The first level of scheduling it is going to encounter is at the guest level, which is going to decide how the threads are going to be placed on the vCPUs. And the next level of scheduling decisions would be made at the host level, where we would decide how these vCPUs are going to be placed on the vCPUs. Um, and just as a side note, um, on Linux with KVM, KMU kind of hypervisors, our vCPUs are like any other regular tasks, so no special treatment. They run with the SCAD normal policy. Um, so as you can see here, we have only one vCPU over subscription is like two, uh, two to one. Um, so only one of the vCPUs can run. And vCPU2 is unlucky, which gets stuck into the run queue of uh, on the host. and. We, and, and here I would like to define a term, phantom vCPU. So a phantom vCPU is a vCPU that is stuck in the run queue on the host, which wants to run the application worker in the guest. And so, of course, this is problematic because most of the applications achieve parallelization using some kind of parallel application runtime libraries. And these libraries make decisions based on how many number of CPUs you have available on your machine. And they don't consider the fact that you might be running inside a virtual machine, and not all of your vCPUs are actually able to run. Some of your vCPUs could be phantoms. Um, and the impact is that you don't necessarily get optimal performance for your parallel application. Um, and we, uh, we tried to implement a solution as a policy which adapts the number of uh, worker threads for a parallel application at runtime. Um, and you can see like which kind of metric we use to do this adjustment. Um, the implementation is at the moment based on um, libgeomp, um, and we build it uh, by modifying the OMP dynamic interface, which lets you uh, change the number of worker threads at runtime. Um, so uh, here is the experiment setup that I generally use for uh, testing uh, this policy. So we have a standard Linux uh, host, Linux guest scenario. Uh, I'm using the 6.11 kernel on the host and 6.6 uh, table kernel in the guest. Uh, we achieve uh, virtualization with like KVM, KMU. Uh, LibGeoMP is from GCC 12 release branch. Um, and I have 36 PCPUs, 36 vCPUs. And it's a single socket machine, so NUMA effects are um, not present. Um, for VM workload, I have selected UA, uh, which I run it with input class B. Uh, it's provided by NAS parallel benchmarks. And I selected this because it has unstructured, unstructured computation patterns. Uh, there are primarily three big loops, um, and then OpenMP parallelize it uh, using some 38,000 internal decision-making points. Uh, so that many opportunities we have. It's a very fine-grained uh, benchmark to adapt your degree of parallelization. Um, and you, with OpenMP, you also have opportunity to either use spinning versus blocking. Uh, for your uh, application. So when you use wait policy active, uh, your worker threads are going to spin after reaching a barrier uh, while waiting for other threads to finish. And when you use policy, uh, wait policy blocking, you are going to, uh, sorry, wait policy passive, you are going to use blocking. Um, and of course, there are trade offs of using spinning versus blocking. Um, intuitively using spinning in an ideal world where there are no phantoms, there is no overload on your host, um, spinning is going to be faster than blocking. So in, for this particular example, it's like about 80% uh, faster. Um, but 
as long uh, as soon as you um, introduce overload on your host, then the performance drops for spinning, and it drops relatively more in comparison to how much it drops for blocking. Um, and the degradation that happens for spinning performance is in proportion with the increased number of phantoms, which is how many vCPUs are not able to actually run on the host. Um, so what, what are we trying to do is we want to keep the benefits of using spinning, but at the same time, we don't want any phantoms. So we want to dynamically adapt our degree of parallelization depending on the overload on the host. Um, so again, continuing with that periodic, uh, uh, um, an example of periodically overloaded host, this is um, a graph that shows how many of the spinners from noisy neighbor are running. So the idea is that for one second, you have noise, for another second, you don't, and then the pattern keeps repeating. And the graph is, uh, the green lines show how many of these noisy neighbor threads are running. Uh, red lines shows how many of them are also stuck in the run queue. And this is done uh, with EVDF as host. Um, and yeah, I mean, the experiment setup I already described on the previous slide. And what we want to achieve is something like this. Um, so whenever there is overload, we are able to immediately uh, decrease the degree of parallelization, stabilize uh, at that value depending on the degree of overload, and then immediately jump, off, jump back off to using more threads when possible. So it kind of works. We can get about 50% of performance improvement. Um, and then I wanted to try that, okay, it also works for other kind of scheduling policies. And primarily I wanted to try SCX pair and SCX uh, flat CG because that would be more interesting for virtualization workloads. Um, but uh, I, I think they need a bit more work for running experiments like this. Uh, but SCX central is also an interesting policy because all your scheduling decisions are offloaded to a central CPU. Um, and I would expect less number of context switches, hence less number of phantoms, um, and I should expect more or less same amount of performance, if uh, performance benefits, if not more, which we do. Um, so that is uh, all good. And the primary question I have for this uh, MC is that I, I want this policy to be available for people to try with their diverse kind of parallelization workload, um, to be tested in various kind of machines, architectures. Um, and so I would want to make it available for SCADEX schedulers. What would be the right way? Like the experiment I showed with SCX Central is done using like the first <coughs> obvious method. I ported it to a SCADEX scheduler, uh, sorry, SCADEX kernel, and then I Everything is still implemented in host kernel, guest kernel, um, and there is um, not much that I really changed with SCADEX. I just launched a SCADEX scheduler and run my experiment. Um, so that's one way to do it. I can provide patches for the guest kernel, host kernel, the kernel modules I use for uh, setting up the shared memory, and a patch for lib 2 omp Another uh, better way would be provide a set of BPF programs and get rid of all the changing of schedulers, uh, sorry, changing of host guest kernel part. I'm already working on it, so and I'm, I also plan to provide that implementation. Um, but I thought it would be really interesting to, to think about what if I can provide like an example SCX scheduler that implements the policy within itself. And that, so first of all, like maybe I can stop here and we can do a poll or something, like what would be the right thing to do, um, like mo most efficient thing to do. Um, and okay, or maybe we can do it in the end. And finally, um, so thinking more in the direction of implementing the whole thing in SCADEX, because hey, I can, if I can do it in BPF, SCADEX uses BPF, SCADEX is the this great thing to write schedulers, but what I'm writing is not really a scheduler. It's like, a, it's still monitoring, um, but thinking of like, can we do it within a uh, SCADEX scheduler would be interesting. And there I have like a couple of requirements. I mentioned some of this in the last office hours. Um, and uh, I think we can continue the discussion uh, during the remaining minutes here. And maybe if we need more time, we can 
continue it on Slack later. Um, so yeah, it, so this scheduler would need a way to um, extract vCPU IDs associated with the task truck. Um, it would also need a way to ha set up and access the shared memory. Um, and I think the trickiest part is that it needs to detect precise context switch and sched wake up boundaries when, with like a, uh, a proper timestamp, because that's how I collect these events and then I have a way to um, uh, process these events at every scheduler tick. So I think we already discussed that with a BPF timer, I can get uh, take care of that part. But the detection of precise uh, boundaries when the vCPU became a phantom, when it became viable again, uh, when a pCPU became idle, I need to gather all this kind of information. Can we, is it feasible to have it as imp implemented inside? Um, like an example scheduler. So that's where I'm going to uh, stop, and then, yeah, I, I can take. Yeah, I, I have a question, but if there's someone that has a more questions, I'll, I'll go. Uh, now, one thing was, is it working? One thing was, uh, so you have a part that is, uh, collecting information, and that could be pure BPF, like you don't need to uh, have that in SCADEX, right? And you may also, based on, the, on that information, you may want to enforce certain actions, and that is where SCADEX could, could come. Yes, but is, the good thing about SCADEX is it's very simple to use. Launch just your yeah. scheduler and it would do what you want, want yeah. what you need it to do. Um, and having additional BPF component mm -hmm. would not make like that seamless. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that you answered you answered my question. Like I, I was going to say, why don't you just collect everything in kernel and do in kernel? But it's it's easier to do in, in BPF because you can I th iterate faster and stuff like that. Okay, thanks. Yeah, um, so we are also doing a project in the same line. So uh, regarding collecting the information, um, currently what we do is use trace points and use a BPF program to attach to the trace points. Okay. Is that what you're also trying to? But trace point would be in the kernel. And I mean, even now what I'm doing is more or less in the similar direction, but like to do it from a SCADEX operation mm -hmm. is something that I'm toying with. Okay, yeah. The other idea was having a stack tops, uh, and but from within this um, SCADEX, I don't know how to do that. But the, the stack tops and attaching to KVM was another way which we are trying to do. Okay. So now with SCADEX, we have two stack tops: one for the scheduler and one for the KVM. I don't know <laughs> how to do that. But what you are doing is uh, going to be very helpful in like the eBPF implementation of things, but it would still have a separate BPF component and it would not be entirely in SCADEX. So I still am looking for a bit more. Yeah, I think the challenging part isn't the scheduler, where the scheduling is, and to Vinny's point about the kernel, at some point you do have to get the kernel involved because I'm guessing your benchmarks are purely user space and don't try to tie into the guest kernel at all. And when you get the guest kernel involved, like it's blocking on a spin lock, you have to communicate that information. And conversely, if the host is injecting an IPI into the guest and it's a priority thing, you want to communicate to the guest that that's priority, and also to the host scheduler that that's priority CPU to run faster. So it's the challenging part is for any pair of virtualization setup is the ABI between the guest and the host. And so that's where my question is, what are your plans to move beyond SCEDEX and actually have an ABI so that you don't have to run, you don't have to control both the guest and the host kernels and the guest and the host schedulers because that works if you have a completely customized setup, but if you want to run a you know, distro kernel in the guest without too much on top that is custom, you need to have an ABI that is established and can be guaranteed to a distro kernel or to some off-the-shelf guest components. So what are the plans for establishing an ABI? 
Um, so I'm also giving like another talk next week at Kernel Recipes, and that's precisely in the same direction that we need to um, come up with like a consensus on how to do it. I've been studying various projects that sort of try to do pair scheduling, and everyone is more or less trying to reinvent the rule. They have like their own way of exposing shared memory and what kind of information they share. And I, I think what the vCPU priority boost pet set, it's a step in good direction, but it's still like not completely, um, I wouldn't say it hasn't landed yet. There are still discussions and definitely things to uh, think about. But at, at the moment, again, the policy is, it, it's an implementation de uh, detail. I'm like a researcher. I'm more interested at the moment in making, making it usable to the extent that uh, I can get feedback. I'm at that stage, but I, I think definitely I, I, it's a good thing to consider. But I haven't really have big proposals about what to do for ABI yet. Yeah, I, I rely on the kernel developers for that. <laughs> Thanks. Hi. Um, have you thought about uh, like VM specific DSQs or like what the DSQ layout should be for hosts versus guests? And should they be separate or? Um, so this would fall into the category of uh, workload specific or like VM specific schedulers. Yeah. And that was also a point I wanted to make that we don't have really such kind of example schedulers available with SCADEX. Right. So it would be, um, yeah. Uh, nice to maybe come up with some kind of policies which are VM specific. But no, I, I don't have anything in that direction working yet. Okay. Um, the more I think about it, uh, the information collection, uh, like Andrea mentioned, we need not, we, it need not be a part of the scheduler, right? Because we are not taking any actions per se. We are just updating the shared memory. Right. So that was also like the first question. Is it something even worth trying to do it in SCADEX? Or maybe SCADEX is just for writing schedulers. If you want to do your monitoring, do it outside. <laughs> yeah, uh, because we don't have hooks inside a SCADEX or a scheduler to do that specifically. So that's what I was thinking. Maybe do it separately. Yeah, but I think it could be interesting to provide monitoring information on top of SCADEX, because why not? <laughs> okay. Out of time. We, yeah. I mean, you, you can reach out to us later. I'm sorry. Um, next one is thank you. leading. Uh, thanks, Imadri.